So this is a piecewise function, and you can see I color-coded it. it. Usually your book won't give it to you color-coded, but I did it so you can see. That's kind of how you have to visualize it. There's three different pieces, the red piece, the blue piece, and the green piece. And what they want us to do for this problem is find out what intervals it's increasing, what interval it's decreasing in interval notation. I'll show you how to do that. The domain and the range and then also all these function values. Let's start with the easiest thing, which is just the function values. So first let's do f of 5. f of 5 means what is the y value when x equals 5? So take your graph, remember this is your x, and this up here is your y or your f of x. So what is the f of x value, or what's f of 5? That means what is y when x is 5? So I go to my, my x-axis right here, my horizontal axis. I go to 5, which is right here. See, it's labeled. And I look for the y value. Well, you can see that the y value, it's, it's on the line. So it's not how far up and down am I going? 0. I'm going 0 up and down. So the function value is 0. f of 5 is 0. That's function notation. So let's try this one. with f of negative 3. Again, go to negative 3. 1, 2, 3, on the, on the x-axis, rather. And there's negative 3 right there. Negative 3 is right there. And what is the y value? Again, it's 0. What's f of negative 8? A little bit trickier. Go to negative 8. Here's negative 5, 6, 7, 8. Negative 8 is right here. This is the point up here. That's negative 8, comma. How high up did I go? 6. Six. It's negative eight comma six. So what's f of negative eight? Negative six. Eight. No, oh, f six. of negative eight is six. What is the y value when x is negative eight? That's what this question is asking. That's what function notation is. Okay. So we could do more. Let's try this. They're not necessarily going to be pretty numbers, and we might have to guesstimate. But what's f of um, two? What's f of two? Again, you go to 2, 1, 2 on the x-axis, starting at 0, 0, which is the origin. 1, 2, go over, and I go up or down to the graph. I go straight up or down to the graph. Scanning straight up or down, and boom, it's right there. Notice it's just barely above 1. So I'm just going to guesstimate about 1.1, 1 .1, let's say. F of 2 is about 1.1. 1 .1. Okay? That's how you do function value. And that function value also is how you, you do is how you should think about domain and range. The domain is asking what what x values what x values are defined by this graph by your by your piecewise graph. My whole graph is this red line connected to the blue line connected to the green line. So the question is what what x values have y values associated with them. And the way to do this is I always start on the far left side, way over here, and I scan, I, I think of like scanning, this, this dotted line represents a scanner. I'm scanning up and down. Is this line going to touch the graph anywhere? The one I just drew at negative 11 or whatever that's at, or 12? Nope, it's not. How about this line? No, how about this line? No, no. When is it going to start touching? Right here at negative 8 is where it's going to start touching. So does it include negative 8? Yes, it does. So the domain equals negative 8, put a closed bracket to mean that it includes, sorry, negative 8. It includes negative 8, comma, and then scanning, 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 scanning. Is it touching? Mm -mm. Yeah. Yeah, touching, 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 touching. And what happens right here at, what point is that? Positive 8? The positive 8? What happens right at positive 8? Is it touching? Is it going to touch it when I draw a line at positive 8? Mm -hmm. No, what does this open circle mean? The open circle means that it doesn't quite get there. Everything right up to that, it will touch, but it won't touch that. Mm -hmm. Let me erase some of these lines because it's getting messy. So, at this point right here, which is 5, 6, 7, 8, at, at positive 8... If I were to draw a scan, if I were to just try to scan it, it wouldn't touch it. But right fractionally before, like immediately before I got to that positive 8, it did touch it. So like 7.999, does that touch it? Sure, but not 8. So what I write is 8 with an open bracket. 
and that's my domain. Is it like when the circle is closed, is it a bracket, and when mm -hmm. the circle is open, it's exactly. a parenthesis? Exactly. When the circle is closed like this, it's a, it's a closed bracket, a bracket like that. When the circle is open, it's a parenthesis, because parenthesis, it means that it does not touch. Parenthesis means that it does not touch it. It's called an open bracket. This is called a closed bracket. The one on the left is called a closed bracket. That's called an open bracket. All right, so let's do the range now. The range is similar to the domain. I'm going to use uh, orange right now. Let's do the range in orange. Now, instead of starting on the left and scanning vertically, vertical lines, I'm starting on the bottom and I'm scanning. Is this going to touch my graph anywhere? That line that I'm scanning at the bottom? No. How about this line right here? No. How about this line? No. This line? No. Where is it going to start touching? Mm, it's right going to start there. touching right there at where? Negative 3. three. And, and it looks like it's included. So I'm going to do a closed bracket. Negative 3. Let me, let me clean this up a little bit. That There is a point right there. That point is part of the graph, okay? So negative 3 comma and we're and keep scanning up and tell me is this going to touch is this going to touch yes 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 how about right here at six yeah six is going to touch it but how about just above six no so what do i do i write six and what kind of a bracket close close bracket because six is included right there yeah got it and how about above six? Is it ever going to touch it? No. No. So that's how you find the domain and the range. I call them vertical scans for the domain, starting on the left, going to the right, horizontal scans for the range, starting bottom and going up. And the reason we're doing that, it seems maybe like the opposite, because you're, when you think of domain, you think of X values, and you think horizontal. Mm -hmm. And that's true. You do think horizontal. But in order to determine if those horizontal values, those X values, touch the graph, you have to scan vertically. Because that's how, remember how we found f of 5, or let's do a harder one, f of negative 8? We went over to negative 8 for the x value of negative 8, and then we scanned this graph. We went up and down to see where it touched it, mm -hmm. and it touches it right there at positive 6. Okay? The last thing is increasing and decreasing. Increasing and decreasing simply means where is the function going from left to right is the function rising or is it falling and this usually is easier for people once they kind of get the hang of it so this graph from here from negative sorry negative 8 to pot to negative 4 what's what's happening as i go to the right decrease the graph is going down so i'm going to draw that in here um let's see one second here so whenever we do increasing and decreasing intervals, what we're going to do is use open brackets on both ends because mm -hmm. we don't really care what the value is on the different sides. We just care what's happening as you go from negative 8 to negative 4 on the x-axis. The y values are going down as you go left to right. So that's a decreasing interval from negative 8 to negative 4. It's decreasing. And what's happening on this blue one right here from, from negative 4 right here? Let me, let me highlight this. What's happening from negative 4 right here all the way to that top point right there? Increase. Yeah, it's increasing as you go from left to right from negative. So I'm going to make this blue. It's increasing from negative 4. To the starting point. The starting, all you're looking at is the starting, you're, you're talking about the X. The starting X. Starting X. So when you're talking about increasing and decreasing intervals, you're talking about the function F of X is increasing on the X values. So from the X values, you always look at the X values. You start from the left and you go to the right and you say, what's happening? Let's jump up on, imagine like a graphing calculator. If you jumped up onto your you use that trace feature in your graph and calculate if you jumped up onto there yeah. and you started going to the right, what would the value be doing? It would be going down yeah. as you're going to the right. And then from negative four all the way to negative one, what's so it doing? Like, it would be like negative four, zero. Not zero, because where does it stop going up? Oh, like in half, halfway. It's at, it's at, let's call it at negative one. Let's say that that's at negative one. Okay. Okay. So that right there is where it's, that point right there, if I go down to the graph, that's where it, that's where it was increasing from negative four to negative one, it was increasing. 
Okay. And then what happened from negative one to the end? What happened? Wait a minute. It's all doing what? From Wait, I don't get why there's not, I don't get the whole bracket thing. Like, I don't get, you can When you're talking about they, increasing and increasing decreasing. increasing and decreasing, is there no brackets at all? You don't, you don't use the closed brackets like you do for domain and range. Because all you're talking about is what's happening where the function itself is increasing and decreasing. You're not really concerned with the values themselves. So you can't really talk about a function at an exact point, whether it's increasing or decreasing. Because if we're just looking at that point, that point right there doesn't mean much. Mm -hmm. If I just stop, take a snapshot of that point right there, that point is negative 1, comma, 1, 2, 3, negative, positive 3. At that point... And by the way, that also looks like an interval, but that's the point, negative 1, negative, positive 3. Mm -hmm. So you have to be really careful when you're using notation. The point negative 1, negative 3 right here, at that exact point, you, you don't really talk about whether it's increasing or decreasing. When you get to calculus, you do talk about that, but not right at this point. Yeah. So we're just talking about the interval between. So whenever you're doing increasing and decreasing intervals, you use open brackets. When you're talking about domain and range... You, you have to use closed or open brackets depending on if it's included. Okay. okay. So it's increasing from negative 4 to negative 1. And then what happens from negative 1? Again, uh, now I'm going from negative 1 and I'm going to the right. And what happens as I jump back on that graph, what's happening to the y values, the function values? Are they going bigger or smaller as I go to the right, starting at negative 1? Smaller. They're getting smaller. So what's it doing from... Negative 1 to, where does it end? Negative 8. Positive 8. Oh, positive. From negative 1 to positive 8, it's decreasing again. And so what I put in between these two, there's two decreasing intervals, I put a union symbol. The union means it's decreasing from here and also in here. And that's how you do that problem. I know it's kind of a longer video, but there's your big old lesson on functions, increasing, decreasing domain range, and finding function values. And now we will talk about how you could come up with, you could talk about how you could define these equations right here, and writing, a, uh, writing this piecewise function in terms of equations, but that'll take another 15 minutes, so I'm going to keep that for another video.